So you've got a shiny new eye thing, and if you're like me, the first thing you'll want to do is plug in your guitar and rock out. Now in order to do that, you'll need a special cable to get your guitar signal in and the audio out into headphones. There's a number of products on the market that do this. The less expensive ones use the headphone microphone jack here to get the audio in and out. The Amplitube iRig, PV AmpKit Link, Griffin Guitar Connect, and others, they're all about 30 bucks, give or take. And the more expensive, higher fidelity, lower noise products use the 30 pin dock connector down here, the Apogee Jam, uh, Sonoma Guitar Jack, Alesis IO Dock. Now, I haven't used any of these products, so I can't really comment on their quality, but I'm going to show you how to build one for yourself. It costs about five or ten dollars. Now, if you're at all interested in electronics, this is a really easy and fun project with only a few simple components to deal with. First, let's take a look at the cables and connectors you'll need. The cable needs to be four conductor and end in a three and a half millimeter tip ring ring sleeve plug. This carries both the microphone signal and the audio output left and right signals. This six foot cable cost me about five dollars. If you happen to have an old iBook audio video cable lying around or something like it, as long as it ends in a tip ring ring sleeve plug, you can just cut the other ends off and use this one. Next you're going to need a three and a half millimeter stereo female phone jack for your headphones to plug into. This one cost about a dollar. And lastly, a quarter inch mono female phone jack for your guitar to plug into. This plastic one cost me about a dollar. I also have this nicer metal one here that was about two bucks. I'm going to be using this one because I like it. You'll also need some electronics bits and pieces, which I'll cover in a minute. But first, let's talk about why you need them. If you were to take your cable and your jacks here, wire them up directly, and plug your guitar into your device, it's not going to sound that good. And the reason is the input on your iPad or your iPhone or your iPod Touch is very low impedance. It's about 1K ohm. Now the circuit in your guitar expects to be plugged into a very high impedance input. Typically an amp or your pedals are about 1 meg ohm. Now if you have a very significant impedance mismatch like this, a lot of the signal will be lost at the input, resulting in a really sucky tone. Another issue is that the microphone input here carries 2.8 volts DC, which is intended to drive a microphone preamp. But in our case, if that 2.8 volts gets pushed into your guitar circuit, it's going to really screw things up and sound bad. So first I'm going to demonstrate how to wire this up directly and show you what it sounds like without paying any attention to impedance matching or buffering that 2.8 volts. You'll hear what it sounds like. Then I'll come back and show you how you can use some fairly simple electronics components to buffer out that 2.8 volts and to match the impedance to make it sound really good. Let's take a look. The first thing to do is to identify for the cable which of the wires is connected to the tip, ring, ring, and sleeve. Now in my cable, the wires are color-coded, yellow, white, and red, which is convenient. Uh, if yours aren't, you could just wrap some tape around the wires and label them. Now I'm going to use a multimeter in continuity mode so that it beeps when you make a connection. You could also just use resistance mode and look for zero resistance. And I'm going to check each of the tip, ring, and ring, and sleeve to find out which wire they're connected to. So let's start with the tip. So it looks like it's white. I'm going to draw a little legend here. That was the tip. White. Okay, so next up is the first ring. That's yellow. Next ring is ground. And you can see that each of these wires coming out, the shield is continuous to the ground. And that leaves the sleeve which by process of elimination must be red. And it is. Now I've looked these up on a pinout online and found that the tip is the left signal, the first ring is the right signal, then there's the ground, and the sleeve is the mic. So in order to test this out, let's go ahead and 
connect these up to our jacks. I'll be using a bunch of alligator leads here. And basically what we want to do is hook up with alligator leads each wire to the corresponding lug on the jacks. So let's start with the headphone jack, left, right, and ground. I'm going to go ahead and use the same color alligator leads as the wires, but if you don't have them, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so starting with, well, I picked up yellow, so that's the right signal. Make sure the plastic cover of the alligator lead is pushed down really far because it's really tight space to work in here and uh, you don't want the metal parts of the, the, the alligator clips to be touching each other. So I'm going to go ahead and put yellow on one side of the headphones. I'm not really paying too much attention yet to which is left and which is right. And for the left signal, right up to the white. Skipping ahead a little bit, I've just connected the guitar jack signal lead to the red microphone wire, and I also need to ground the sleeve. I like to use black and green wires for ground. Let's go ahead and plug this in. I'm going to use a multimeter on DC voltage mode to confirm what we said before, that between the sleeve and the first ring here, there should be 2.8 volts DC. So for us, that's between the uh, red and ground. I put one lead on red and one on ground. And you can see over there, 2.719 volts DC. I'm going to plug in a cable I've prepared here into the headphone jack. And the other end of this goes over to my computer's audio interface. And then we'll plug in a guitar cable. I'm using Amplitube Free. I'm on the lead amp in the 4x12 cabinet with the controls basically centered, except that the gain is down quite a bit and the reverb is turned off. I've got no effects loaded, so this should be a pretty clean sound. I'm playing my GNL ASAT 3 middle and bridge pickups with the tone and the volume turned all the way up. Let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> So you can hear it sounds pretty muddy, distorted, not very clean. Let's hear how the pots sound. That's the volume control. Sounds pretty messed up. Here's tone. And the pickup switch. So all that noise and stuff is from the 2.8 volts getting pushed into the circuit. Not good. All right, let's take a look at how the electronics can help clean this up.